So today, let's answer the question, does skipping your breakfast cause diabetes or does it cause you to gain weight? Okay. There's been quite a few studies out there that show the link between skipping a breakfast and worsening your blood sugars or increasing your risk for diabetes and even gaining more weight. Okay, guys, so there's a couple things you really need to know. Number one, most if not all the studies that show this link are sponsored by the food industry. Surprise! And the studies that are not sponsored by the food industry do not show this correlation. So recently there was another article published November 2018 and entitled, Breakfast Skipping is Associated with Increased Risk of type 2 diabetes among adults, a systematic review and meta-analysis of prospective cohort studies. And this was published in the Journal of Nutrition. So I just want to kind of go through this because it's quite comical. Okay. First section. In conclusion, the study indicated that there is an association between breakfast skipping and risk of type 2 diabetes. Okay. The key word is association. What does association mean? Does it mean that it caused anything? No, it means it's a connection only. It doesn't mean that it caused anything, okay? Point number two, uh, to strengthen the evidence on this association, more studies are warranted, especially from different geographic locations because the current evidence came from only the United States in Asia. So if you live anywhere other than these two locations, all this information doesn't apply to you. Okay, next point. Uh, this was based on a questionnaire with and without a validation. So you're just going to ask people, hopefully they've remembered, and hopefully they're telling the truth. All right, next point. Interestingly, the strongest association with type 2 diabetes was observed for the combination of breakfast skipping and having a Western diet pattern among men from the health professionals follow-up study. Okay, what is the Western diet pattern? That is the SAD diet. Basically, it's what people eat in the West, which is all refined carbohydrates and sugars. All right, so let's cover the next point. Evidence from studies has shown that high intake of red meat, comma, foods with high glycemic index or load, comma, and sugar-sweetened beverages were associated with an increased risk of type 2 diabetes whereas whole grain products and coffee consumption were associated with reduced risk. Okay, guys, so you can see right there, they're not quite unbiased uh, because they're telling you whole grains will decrease the risk. Okay, guys, next point, moving right along. There was evidence for publication bias indicating that small studies with negative results were missing, okay? So you can see right there, they're basically cherry picking. We're going to show you this correlation, but we're going to omit this little piece over here. All right. And the last little point I want to bring up is that there were different definitions of breakfast skipping among the different studies, which again, it doesn't keep everything very standard. So you can see guys that this study was completely filled with holes, but there's a really interesting paper that I put a link down below that you have to check out because it goes into this topic and how you can manipulate data. And there's just point after point after point. But go ahead and read this in your spare time because it's quite fascinating. They list all the different studies on this connection between skipping a breakfast and diabetes, skipping breakfast and weight gain. And they basically show you all the results of the independent studies that are not sponsored by the food industry. So you can actually see the true information. And guys, I just wanted to bring up the most important point, okay? Um, and that is this. Whether you consume a breakfast or don't consume breakfast has absolutely nothing to do with whether you're going to get diabetes or not. Why? Because diabetes is a disease of what you eat, okay? These studies don't talk about the diet. They're talking about skipping a breakfast. That's ridiculous. How can you possibly determine if someone's going to gain weight, get diabetes, or have a disease if you don't know what is being consumed, okay? You, you can't. It's impossible. It's illogical. You're sleeping all night long, right? You're fasting all night long. You wake up in the morning and then you eat breakfast. You actually break the fast. That first meal 
does not stimulate your metabolism in some way that helps you lose weight. That's not what happens. Now, people use that and they'll say, well, well, I got hungry. Well, that's because your blood sugars went up and then it went down and then you're going to be hungry. That is not necessarily stimulating fat burning. It may stimulate certain enzymes to help you digest, but it has nothing to do with burning fat. I mean, there's two things related to diabetes. Number one, what you're consuming, how, how many carbohydrates are you consuming? And the data of eating in general stimulates insulin, okay? Diabetes is a disease of too much sugar in the blood. So when you eat, especially carbs, you're gonna raise sugar. Take a diabetic who's on insulin, for example. What happens when he or she eats? They have to take insulin to reduce the sugar, okay? Is that improving diabetes? No, eating worsens diabetes, okay? Fasting lowers glucose, lowers insulin, thereby helping diabetes. It helps you lose weight. It doesn't worsen anything. That's illogical. And when you combine intermittent fasting, let's say you're, you're going to now skip breakfast and you're continuing to eat a bad diet, you, you've never adapted. So in other words, you're going to have a heck of a time getting into fat burning because it takes at least three days for your body to switch over to burning fat so you can go from one meal to the next. If you've never adapted, if you skip breakfast, your blood sugars are going to go down, you're going to be really, really hungry, grouchy, and tired, and you're going to eat, you're going to feel better, but you're never going to fully adapt. And another big problem is that the media picks up on these studies, okay? And of course, it's you know why they're doing it. The food industry wants to get people to keep eating. The media picks it up, and then it becomes truth. And I want to show you something on that one point. All it seems to take is some association or some link to make it a fact. Here's some quotations that show breakfast is widely believed to protect against obesity. This is by Dr. Oz. The fact is, when you're trying to lose weight, you can't skip breakfast. Okay, that's false information. Here's another by WebMD. There's ample evidence that the simple act of eating breakfast every day is a big part of losing weight, lots of weight. Here's another one by the U.S. Surgeon General. Eating a healthy breakfast is a good way to start the day and may be important in achieving and maintaining a healthy weight. Here's one by John Hopkins. Studies show that breakfast can be important in maintaining a healthy body weight. Here's another one by Mayo Clinic. In fact, skipping breakfast actually increases your risk of obesity. And of course, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics want to trim your waist? Try eating breakfast. All right, guys, in summary, association does not mean cause. We are being hit from every angle of research data being manipulated and camouflaged as this uh, credible evidence-based science. So in the future, if you see something like this, get the study, read it yourself before you accept it as an actual fact. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.